Hello and welcome to another deep dive. Today we're tackling a topic I know a lot of you have been eager to unpack, and it's a big one. Should Nigeria adopt a single six-year term for presidents and governors? It's a question with huge implications, you know. We're not just talking about changing a number here, but potentially reshaping the very fabric of Nigerian politics. Exactly. And who better to guide us through this than Senator Orji Uzor Kalu, a man who certainly isn't afraid to speak his mind. He holds nothing back. We'll be dissecting his recent interview with Vanguard News, where he really lays it all out there. From the cost of campaigns to the pressure of re-election, Senator Kalu certainly gives us a lot to unpack. Okay, so let's dive right into the heart of it. Kalu's core argument is that this current system, with its two-term limit, is bleeding us dry. Financially, that is. He claims these back-to-back -back election campaigns are just a massive drain on resources, money that could be better spent serving the people. It's true. Those rallies, the media, the posters everywhere, none of that comes cheap. It all ends up. And Kalu argues that this constant focus on securing that second term can overshadow the actual, you know, the actual business of governing. He paints this picture of leaders obsessed with re-election, making decisions based on what's going to get them re-elected rather than what's good for the nation in the long run. Right. Short-term political gains over long-term good for the nation. This raises a really important question. Does a single, longer-term free leaders up to think beyond the next election cycle? Could it lead to more ambitious, legacy-defining projects, the kind that truly transform a nation? That's the ideal, isn't it? But then again, we have to look at the other side of the coin. Kalu talks a big game about long-term vision, but then he drops this bombshell about senatorial finances that makes you wonder. He claims that the monthly allowance for senators, which is a cool N14 million, isn't enough. Now, this is where things get really interesting. N14 million. That's a figure most Nigerians can only dream of, and he's saying it's not enough to cover everything from staff salaries to office expenses. It makes you really question, you know, the financial realities of holding office in Nigeria. Exactly. And it throws a whole new light on Kalu's call for a single term. Is he truly advocating for better governance, or is this about easing the financial burden on politicians like himself? It's a valid question for sure. And it speaks to the need for more transparency, way more transparency in how our leaders are managing public funds. If a senator is struggling on N14 million a month, what does that say about the system as a whole? Yeah, it definitely makes you think about the pressures they face, the temptations. And it makes you wonder if Kalu thinks the current allowance is insufficient. Would a single six-year term also come with, say, a pay raise? Now, that's a question worth considering. And it brings us back to this fundamental dilemma, right? Does a single term actually encourage a laser focus on governance and legacy building, as Kalu suggests, or does it create an environment where accountability is kind of diluted and potentially even greater financial burdens are placed on the people? It's a complex issue, no easy answers. Yeah. But to really unpack it, I think we need to broaden our perspective a bit. Absolutely. Looking at how single-term systems have actually played out in other countries can be really illuminating. I mean, some countries have seen some remarkable success with it, you know, with leaders feeling bolder, more able to implement long-term reforms without having to worry about, oh, you know, facing a backlash at the polls. Yeah, that makes sense. But I imagine there are some cautionary tales as well. What happens when you have a leader who has the six-year mandate, this long leash, and they don't live up to expectations. How do you hold someone accountable when there's no real, you know, immediate prospect of voting them out? That's the heart of it, isn't it? It's a yeah. gamble, right? A single term removes that direct line of accountability that you have with a two-term system. It's like saying, okay, we trust you with this immense power for this extended period. Go ahead, do what you think is best. And let's be real, Nigerian history hasn't always inspired, you know, a ton of confidence in unchecked power. Yeah, exactly. We've seen how good intentions can sometimes, well, maybe not erode, but you know, how they can be, how can I put it, maybe how the allure of power can be so strong, especially when there's limited accountability. Yeah. It raises concerns about, well, the potential for corruption, for one thing. Right. And the sense of entitlement that, you know, could breed complacency or even worse. Abuse of power. Exactly. It's a tough balance, isn't it? On one hand, you have this possibility for long-term vision, bold decision-making. Right. But on the other hand, you risk creating this system where a leader becomes almost untouchable, unanswerable to the people they're supposed to serve. And this is where, you know... Understanding the specifics of Nigeria's political landscape becomes so crucial. Oh, absolutely. 
how would a single term presidency work with everything else? We've got the federal system, the role of the National Assembly, the influence of all these different interest groups. It's complicated. Very. It's like trying to solve a puzzle, but you don't even have all the pieces. Right. And just when you think you're starting to wrap your head around it all, Kalu throws another curveball. Yeah. He gives this really intriguing, although some might say self-serving take on the current Tanubu administration. Ah, uh, yes, his comments about Tanubu. Yeah. What do you make of that? Well, he seems to acknowledge the economic difficulties people are facing, but he insists that Tanubu understands the struggles of everyday people. He even goes as far as to say that Tanubu, you know, that he drives around a buja at night to see things for himself. Really? That's what Kalu said. Interesting. It's an interesting narrative for sure, but I well, mean, is there any truth to it? It does make you wonder about his motives, you know? Is he just trying to calm the public down a bit, reassure them, or is this... I don't know, is this some calculated attempt to kind of manage perceptions, maybe lay the groundwork for, you know, future political moves? Especially when you think back on what he said earlier about politicians being consumed by those re-election campaigns. It makes you wonder, is Kalu maybe subtly advocating for a single term to benefit, you know, himself and his fellow politicians, not necessarily for the benefit of the nation as a whole? It's a game of political chess, isn't it? We're all sitting here trying to figure out who's playing who and what the next move's going to be. And in this game, the stakes are incredibly high. You know, the structure of our democracy, the balance of power, the lives of millions of Nigerians, it's all on the line. And that's why we need to be having these conversations. We have to unpack these arguments, challenge these assumptions, and demand, you know, real transparency from our leaders. Transparency, accountability, those are the key words here, right? I mean, whether we're talking about campaign finances, these senatorial allowances, or the potential downsides of a single-term presidency, it always seems to come back to trust. Can we really trust our leaders to do what's right for the nation, even when they don't have that pressure of re-election hanging over their heads? It's a question we all have to grapple with as Nigerians, because at the end of the day, the power rests with the people. Your vote, your voice, your participation, those are the things that shape our democracy. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Senator Kalu's, well, let's call them provocative propositions, we want to leave you with this. Imagine, just for a second, that you're the one designing Nigeria's political system. You're starting from scratch. What would it look like? What would you put in place to make sure there's accountability, to encourage real progress, to build a nation that actually serves its people? It's a question worth thinking about, debating with your friends and family, and ultimately answering through how we choose to participate in this democracy. And if you're looking for more in-depth discussions about the issues that are shaping Nigeria's future, be sure to check out What's Buzzing Nigeria. They're always ahead of the curve, digging deeper into the stories that matter, and sparking the kind of conversations we need to be having. Don't just read the headlines, be a part of the conversation. Head over to What's Buzzing Nigeria and join the dialogue. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, stay curious.